What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Gaming Channel. My name's AJ Gales. How y'all doing? We are back with This is the Police. It has been a long freaking time since I've done a video for this series. I mean, I was absolutely loving this game. I got completely distracted. Um, really glad to get hopping back into this. I, I I can't fully remember where we were. I know we were dealing with a with a serial killer. I think I fucked something up, and you know we we aren't gonna catch the serial killer. But uh, let's let's keep going. Let, let's let's just let's just hop right into this and and, and see where we are. We're day eighty one. Jeez. All right. Uh, street racer stage accident in city center. Dressed in blood film, banned in local theaters for excessive cruelty. Uh, segregationist teacher promoted to Dean. See what's going on. Uh, the Mafia not too happy with us right now. No such thing as a free lunch. City Hall is liking us. Let's go to work. Yeah, a box of Caesars. With that outfit, I could see you coming a mile away, Mr. Boyd. Ah, Mr. Chaffee. Knowing your love of theatrics, I was afraid you'd keep the mystery surrounding the dentist going for at least another day or two. <laughs> what could you mean, Mr. Boyd? <laughs> well, it's true. Robespierre does have a passion for mystery and the dramatic. But there's no need to confuse the actor with his character. For you, I'll play the hurried businessman who likes to cut to the chase. That's not quite me either, but though this mask I wear is quite a burden, I have long grown used to it. Besides, I don't want to distract you from your 180-day quest, not for a second longer than necessary. My, is half your time already up? Almost. I don't we have nine days until it's halfway? You simply cannot imagine, Mr. Boyd, the painstaking work I've done to cultivate this maniac image. I turn to such literature the likes of which I wish I never knew. If our law enforcement agencies possessed even the slightest aesthetic sense, they would have instantly seen the game for what it was. <laughs> and the postcards. What can I say? And if the real dentist turned up again at the wrong moment? I don't imagine lunatics take kindly to imposters. The dentist died of a heart attack last spring while he was Oh! Oh god, I'm late to the party. This quite by accident. From a university friend, a therapist. It was he who convinced the dentist to stop killing, by the way. Why the murders? Obviously they'd all been raped by Rogers. It would have been much easier to just get them to talk. Mr. Boyd, the last thing I want is to appear a brutish butcher. I spent enough time on these women to know they were no use to me alive. Not sure if I should be ashamed to say it, but Stuart Rogers far surpasses me in his ability to intimidate people. Apparently, such things only come with experience. But murder? For that, I truly do feel ashamed. It's a burden I shall have to bear for the rest of my days. But sadly, it's not my greatest shame. This dude's what nuts, and I love it. For? To frame an innocent woman for such terrible crimes? What? Are you unhappy with a woman cast as the serial killer? Firstly, I'd say Dear Jordan adds a certain grace to the whole sordid story. And second, of all the people I hold in my debt, she's the strongest. And not just physically. Third, she had good reason to settle her debt with me as quickly as possible. Without going into details, I'll just say that she's a very, very caring mother. Do these taste good? Had we met earlier, Mr. Boyd, I would have shown you a far more refined pleasure. One without such an unpleasant smell. I'm afraid to even imagine what you count as pleasures, Mr. Chaffee. Fountains of blood in the city square? Mr. Boyd, you're not listening to me at all. I didn't take any enjoyment from the killings. Everything I've done was of strict necessity. I couldn't make Jordan kill all the women that Rogers raped. That would have been excessive. If I had made her kill them all, you'd be rather upset, no? I was talking about Lana, isn't he? I fully understand your plan, Mr. Chaffee, but you've given me more than enough reasons to arrest you. 
Yes, but allow me to counter them with one good reason not to. I think you mentioned you dined here once? Yes, not the best restaurant in town. And maybe you're just not familiar with the full range of our services. The hell is going on? When I inherited this tasteless place from my father, I knew I could never make it into an exquisite restaurant. Instead, I accentuated the atrocity of it all, an aesthetic of a different kind. Now I even live here. To me, this complex is like a microcosm of Freeburg. <laughs> uh, what is this fucker, like filming snuff films or something? At school, I read a French novel whose name doesn't need mentioning, and I read many amazing things. It seems that in Paris, just before the revolution, certain places were quite popular. People of wealth and taste visited from the city, shed their luxurious coats, peeled off their white gloves, and with the help of the local farmer, they brutally stabbed a hole in a bull and decorated themselves with the splattering blood as they prepared a large piece of meat for the fire. In the bull's suffering, these effeminate aristocrats found a perverse sort of pleasure. Now I make these pleasures available to the people of Freeburg. I will be honest with you. People who pursue such cruelty truly are crazy. But what is interesting... The best steaks are cut from the tender meat of young bulls. Eleven months is just right. Beautiful, healthy, full of strength. But these wealthy degenerates who pay $7,000 so our experts will show them where to plunge the blade for maximum effect. Even they don't have the spirit to slaughter the young bull. The thought never enters their minds. They look into the eyes of the healthy animal bursting with energy and they quickly shuffle past. As if by instinct, they are drawn to the old, weary, fading bulls. And then, with terrible smiles on their faces, they chew through tough steaks that taste of burning rubber. They feel that they're doing something real with their own hands, a sort of natural selection, as if they're agents in the natural process. But nature also teaches us that the old beast unable to fend off any threat, might yet survive if it cowers in a dark corner and pretends it doesn't exist. Then, perhaps, the young predator will pass. Mr. Scott will drive you back. I'm late for an appointment. The hell was the point of that? Mr. Boyd, you won't believe it, but the person I just got off the phone with was talking about you. Seems like I'm pretty popular these days. By the way, Mr. Boyd, I've got to ask, why half a million? Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Okay, I got I got to admit I wasn't uh I have no idea what the hell the point of like going to that butcher thing was. Um, although I, I okay, I it makes sense, you know. Robespierre is is the well, not Robespierre, but you know what I mean. What I'm talking about with the whole thing with the uh, with the dentist that was clever. I didn't see that coming. Mr. Boyd, federal agents captured the dentist in our area, but without your actual participation, why were the Freeburg police so inactive? Uh, it's hard to communicate with them. That's a stupid question. Um, that's a lie. My men played a role in the dentist capture. Our sources claim that you concealed evidence from federal investigation. Uh, could you explain why? Um, I wanted to be the hero. My career is kind of... Oh, shit. That was, a, that was, I, I totally misread that. I wanted to make a real big final arrest. Are you surprised the dentist was a woman? 
Women are just capable of evil as men. How do you comment on the rumors about the relationship between Mayor Rogers and all five of the dentists uh, of the dentist Freeberg victims? Before the law, we were... Sorry about that. Thank you. Sorry, I clicked off the screen for some stupid reason. There we go. Can we... Oh, wow. We don't even get to act in day 81. Freeberg boxer caught in doping scandal. Freeberg police assist federal agents in apprehension of the dentist. Convicted serial killer... Albert Ramsey's, or Ramirez, excuse me, sues the city. Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Man, I wish there was such a thing as a free lunch. Uh, my band is playing a charity concert for six children. No. Some friends of mine asked me to help out the animal shelter, but I was short staffed. No. Some car accidents. Uh, yeah, you can have the day off for that. Ah, you stupid bastard. Yes, come tomorrow. Damn it, Yancey. Look, I get the guy who, you know, his kid was in a car accident. Okay, you can, uh, you go go be with your kid. I get that. But my band's playing a charity concert. My friends need me to work at the... Ugh. You withheld evidence about the, de uh, about the dentist from the federal agents, and they know it. You're being fined, your staff reduced, and they're cutting your salary by 80%. Son of a... Jesus! You received this week's salary from your dead employees. Here's your week's salary. Give me a second. Improve our SWAT team. Uh, increase efficiency. Share. Police station. Jesus. Our cop slots and jeez, we're super low on, on officers now. So okay, so who are we losing on shift B? We're losing one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, we lost five on each. So we got uh, five. Okay, so you'll go to shift. A, shift B, shift A, B, and shift A. Okay, cat, you were being nice and letting me pet you. Now you gotta go down because you're being bad. Okay, so who all did we lose here? God damn, we lost Moser, Porter, and Glasgow. Of course, we lost all our good detectives. Well, oh, okay. Okay, so, uh,. We lost uh, one, two, three, four. We lost four on that shift and one on the other. So, yeah, all these guys actually go to shift A. It infuriates me. Uh, hello, is this the police? It's Dolores Park. Someone is in my house. I hear footsteps coming from downstairs. My husband is on a business trip and won't be home for another hour. Please come right now. I know it must be some terrorist who's going to rob and rape me. I've locked myself in my room, but a door won't stop this beast. I have very, I, I'm, I'm very, um, I, I doubt that's that's what that's going, what's going on there. Uh, details. What's going on? This is a counterfeiting case. Oh, this is a uh, Vic Sparga. Okay. Right, we're gonna we're we're bringing down bringing down Varga, aren't we? Yeah, I have. I highly doubt that that's what she says it is. I think that her husband just came home early. Uh, a crowd has gathered on the steps of City Hall demanding that city officials legalize euthanasia. The protesters are chanting, My life, my death, my choice. City Hall employees report that the people brought homemade signs and the protest is proceeding peacefully. Um, can I send these? Oh, wow, I can still send them. Okay, McNally and Hater. Bring the paddy wagon. I mean, if it's unlawful assembly, I, you're even if they're protesting peacefully, they're still not supposed to like they're not legally allowed to be there. If I'm reading the charge right, but maybe I didn't need to send anybody there at all. Really sucks that we're losing Sabaki and Asano. Uh, library, librarian, 
God damn, I can't read. Rolando Boone reported that a young man came in looking for books on chemistry and monographs on explosive substances and publications on extremist topics. Many of the books he requests are prohibited. The guy looks scary. Uh, his eyes made my blood run cold. Okay. Sabaki Nasano, who can handle that one? Let me guess. That's a uh, yeah. Miss Parks returned from business trip an hour early. It was he who was making the noise. Uh, called it. The offenders are caught. Officers unharmed. I love McNally's look with that beard and the shades. As soon as the suspect uh, sees the police, pulls a huge knife from his bag and rushes towards the librarian, shouting, "You called the pigs!" Hit him with the nightstick. Uh, Chief Boyd, I represent the interests of a private military corporation, which is hoping to attract significant investment from your city. We are preparing an investor presentation, and we'd like to demonstrate the inadequacy of police training it, uh, in matters of public safety. Please understand this is just business, and we can all win here. Give us a couple of hours with your weakest and laziest guys, and my kids will look like gladiators next to them. I promise you the company will remain in your debt. Uh, Hater and Mixon. Go, go handle that. Um, can we declare him dead yet? Oh, he hello, cat. Are you going to be nice now? Are you going to keep trying to tap the screen? Uh, let's see. Uh, parishioner Mana Bush, while she was on her way to church, encountered a group of incredibly strange teenagers. They were running around in weird costumes, fighting with sticks and talking like robots. Maybe these crazy kids escaped from a mental hospital. Better catch them and send them back. No, they're just LARPers. I love that cat, man. But he just keeps coming up and bugging me. Boss, these guys are like machines. They walked all over us, but we learned a lot. 20 minutes with these guys is better than a whole year at the academy. Uh, Mr. Cottrell says he was very pleased with our performance, and he offered us free training in, at training complex. What do you think? Yeah, sure, go. I don't care. You guys, are, you guys were fired anyways. <laughs> Members of the Science Fiction Club are just having fun at the park. Called it. Uh, Glady Shell was enraged about some comment that her colleague, Matthew Tolland, made, so she grabbed a stapler and began to beat him over the head with it. The Michelle yelled loudly and lashed out at the secretary. She's having a nervous breakdown. Please hurry, uh, said the suspect's boss, who phoned in the incident. Jesus Christ, all right. Sano, Goodwin, Nally, you all should be able to handle that. An anonymous tip just came in. A large shipment of Colombian coffee is being unloaded, and they're shipping heroin inside the bags of beans. There's only a few guards watching them unload the shipment, so if the police rolled up, they might just give up without a fight. Kochi, uh, that guy, uh, Subaki, and the SWAT, go handle that. Uh, the elderly uh, Canella Davis called up in a fit of hysterics. Come over quick. I've been robbed. The little bastard stole a treasure. Uh, I, I, I got a feeling, seeing that they weren't very specific with what was stolen, that it wasn't what they say it was. The woman grabbed the second stapler in her hands. <laughs> These staplers look like deadly weapons. They were bloodshot eyes to deal with the woman a solid blow to the jaw. Bam. Got her. I highly doubt that robbery is what it, what it says it is. They were very... Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I feel like the SWAT should be able to handle it. Everyone should be fine. That's what I thought. Yeah, oh, we found cocaine. Called it, quarreling with the mother of a little boy who climbed into the fountain and took out a few coins. I made that wish, and you little bastard stole it. I uh, like that. Uh, 
All right, a respectable sounding man with a sleepy voice called in complaining that fireworks are being set off right in front of his house. They look like bombs, but they have huge bags filled with all sorts of firecrackers. Uh, Goodwin McNally. Uh, Patricia Buckler says 10 or so people came onto the farm with some strange equipment. Uh, they wandered around with their gear for a while, then stopped and begun to dig a huge pit. Her husband didn't approve of the people rummaging around the property, but his attempt to investigate ended in a fight. The farmer was badly beaten. Just send everyone else that we still got. I really wish I wouldn't have screwed up that, uh, that serial killer case. Okay, three new frames. So our always sleeps in his mansion. Wakes up exactly at 5.56. He says the extra few, four minutes. Uh, okay. Okay, sleeps in his mansion. Push that back, so he walks down to the... Okay, walks down walks down to the thing. I don't think that's the right door, but we'll keep it just... We'll, we'll keep it in mind just in case. Just because that do those doors didn't sound the same. Uh, there are three drunk men on the street lighting fireworks and throwing them about. When the they see the police, one of them pulls out fireworks. It looks like dynamite and sets fuse. Cool firecracker. Never seen one like those before. Aim at the man. The man throws the explosive to one of his friends. The wick ha burned halfway down. Bam. That's how you do it. Grace under fire. Okay, so what's... Uh, who's all on this investigation? Is it literally just everybody we have? <laughs> Plus some people who are getting canned. Wonderful. Destruction of property. taken care of. And that'll be the day. As a lot of people are getting fired and I'm not happy about it again. Disabled society demands increased benefits. Bride suffers happiness heart attack at city registry office. Modern Art Gallery opens modern painting course. I don't get why uh, why that thing says the uh, city hall's happy with us, but they made us like fire like a shitload of people. Too tired, can't walk straight. Can I go? <sighs> yeah. I drank too much. I can't hold it together today. Can I go home? No. I need you. My cats ate some cream past its sell by date, and they had diarrhea all night. They're better now. I like to spend it. No. They also really hate the fact that they, they fire, like, a lot of our good officers. Police station. Okay, what's the labor market look like? Uh, sweet. Looks like we actually have some pretty some pretty good guys. Okay, so how many officers went? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven officers for tomorrow, too. Okay. So that's seven officers there, and we got seven officers here. Uh, we have another six, so we can go three and three. Uh, who needs the higher numbered staff? Uh, okay, let's start with shift B. PC platon platonic, okay. Go to A, B, A. I'm just going down the line here. B, um... One, two, three, four, five, six detectives. One, two, three, four, five detectives. Go to shift B, and you also... Actually, who's got the lower skilled detectives? Yeah, that one can... The other one can go to shift A. 
There we go. So we're full up on detectives now. We need one more actual police officer. Two garbage men were emptying some cans near a bus stop. A drunk man came past and thought he'd make fun of them. He tried to make them fight him. So the garbage men got angry, stuffed him in a can, and threw him into the garbage truck. They then continued on their route. Simpson Vermillion. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. I love these cases that this game comes up with. They're so fun. Uh, two old men were sitting on a park bench playing chess. Suddenly, one of them dashed the pieces off the board, grabbed it, and started uh, beating his opponent over the head with it. The eyewitnesses who called it in uh, was quite agitated. Hurry, the old man's whole head is covered in blood. Powers Woodward, that's on you guys. The police caught up with the garbage men, pulled it over. Two men in overalls are laughing in the cab. Guys, joke's over, release the hostage. The drunk man gets out of the garbage truck, shakes the dirt off, and attacks the police. And here's the real beast, scavengers, bastards. You're the worst of all, filling your bellies at our expense. You all die. Uh, throw them back. <laughs> Let's just cuff them. Oh, uh, man, I'd like to... Th oh, really? You guys couldn't cuff them? You guys suck. I should have thrown them back into the dumpster. On the, the offenders have been caught. Officers unharmed. Civilians were unharmed. Good work. Eh, Jack, we have some going down the Sugar Dream Confectionery at 1850. We wouldn't want any policemen crashed. I actually might let that go for three grand. Oh, got a bomb threat. That's unserious. An elderly employee at uh, Scissors Sisters and Office Supply Store reported that a courier brought in a special parcel. The return address is smeared with ketchup or blood. Nobody else can hear it, but I swear I can hear something ticking inside. Robbins, Dixon, Gardner, you're on that. It sounds like something we should send some of our, uh, our more experienced policemen. A young female pharmacist said an addict with a length of steel pipe is trying to break into her pharmacy. Powers Woodward. It's on you guys. Sort of conduct. An old man called in to report right in front of his favorite park bench. A group of crazy looking people wearing very revealing clothing were flopping around on the grass, spitting on the feelings of God fearing Christians and alarming everyone who walks past. All right. <laughs> We've the attic has broken in the window. He's trying to climb through. His feet are still sticking out. <laughs> I like the I like the grab their shoes and tickle the feet. The attic falls out of the window and back onto the street. He drops a scrap of pipe and tries to escape. Use the pepper spray. Oh, I love the last one. I didn't see that was uh, was flirt with the pharmacist. Okay. Kimberly Adams was celebrating her birthday with some friends and acquaintances. After a long dinner, she started opening her gifts and found a huge dildo. She flushed and then grabbed the sex toy and attacked her friends who gave her the gag present. You bitch, you soulless monster. All my friends from the seminary are here. Is this what you want them to think of me? Miss Adams then continued to beat her friend over the head until she made a bloody mess of her scalp. <laughs> this is this fucking Saints Row? Once again, I could really use your help. I'm trying to expand the ranch, but the adjacent territory belongs to fucking idiots who are asking an insane amount 
today I'll be in a regular meeting with them, and I was a bunch of police officers to come in during the meeting and start asking lots of questions about murders on the property, maniacs running loose, drug addicts living nearby, stuff like that. Basically, it helped me put pressure on the sellers and knock the cost down a little bit. If the Freebird police help me, I'll stretch out my hand and offer, say, a boost in your budget, enough for five new jobs, okay? Ooh. I heard five new jobs. Eight ten in progress. Nope, we're letting that one go for three grand. Two thirteen in progress. Uh, an angry man just phoned in, yelling about his neighbors. He's been hearing terrible ringing and shouting coming from every side of his house. My ears are going to explode. You have to stop them right away. Some powers, uh, chief. Flip. Well, where no one's going. The girl's pounding her friend's head with all her might. Her victim hasn't been conscious for a while. A huge crowd has gathered around, and it's impossible to get near the fight. Force the crowd. Uh, blow the police whistle with all your might. Throw it at the women. <laughs> Seeing the police, he's saying, look. <laughs> Oh, my God. That picture is awesome. See, the police, the assistant comes to her senses, jumps up, and makes a break for the back door, pushing people out of the way with their sex toys. Stop the center. <laughs> Groaning your mouth to mouth on the taser. <laughs> I love the artwork on that. It's the blocky dildo. Oh my god, I'm so sorry guys, that was funny. Chief, we love playing the part in the end we said uh in the end we even believe in ourselves and we really don't mind eating a little extra on the side. We don't even ask for a thank you. But when we all kinda hinted that we deserved a couple hundred extra, Mr. Moneybags just hissed at us and said fuck off. Uh, that he was on the verge of making a deal of a lifetime. That's not how things are done. We're heading to the bar. Great. That's eh, fine. That guy said he's thrown in the budget for a few more jobs. I'll take it. So let's see what the shooting is. Uh, Miss Kent called and complained about a drunken neighbor who decided it would be fun to go out after sundown, shoot the beer canes in the backyard, get the drunk behind the bars before he kills someone. Powers. Can I send powers and SWAT? All right. Well, that one's just going away. Call came in from Clark McClellan, a former psychiatric patient who recently stopped taking his prescribed. Okay. Part of the counterfeiting. So he wakes up at 5.56, downstairs, to the vault, keypad, no, okay. I think it's the, the door that I was looking at. Well, we'll go with that for now. Uh, report on the shooting. Got him. As the day slowly rolls to an end. I'll play one more day. I'm getting... Usually I'll play these a little longer. I'm just I'm getting tired. Been oh, a long day. Uh, theater director, we need fresh faces and new voices. Freeberg chess master reaches World Cup. Drug addiction, the city increased by thirty eight percent. Mr. Boyd, this is for you. That's it. What's it? Uh, this is from our guy. What? It's from the private detective. Oh, 
No, no, Mr. Boyd. It's from an Agent Dixon. Fine. I'm sorry I couldn't swing by before I left, but I'll definitely be back to celebrate your retirement, Ethan. Excuse me. Thieves. Bobby Flash and the Card Shop. Bobby Flash and the Cats Club. Bobby Flash and the Temptations. Ah, that's what I need. Dude, tired. Can't watch right. Can I go home? God damn it. Brother went hiking in the woods and disappeared. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say you could go do that. Yeah, I have a family member who went missing in the woods. Can I go help with the search effort? Yeah, I think that's about this. Mr. Boyd, I'm Ron Atticus. Uh, we haven't yet had the pleasure, but I'm sure you passed my lovely skyscraper from time to time. It's a wonderful building, and I'd like to expand the surrounding territory. I have received all the necessary documents for the demolition of the small neighborhood park. The crew is standing by, but as always, the rabble are causing a lot of problems. Ladies with strollers and dog lovers claiming they use the park every day. I wouldn't want you to take me in for accidentally burying one of the protesters under a layer of concrete. If you could send some men to break up these bums up. Be extremely grateful. Okay. That is a lot of officers. Jack, I just had a very pleasant conversation with Mr. Devlin. Incredibly flattering about your work and donating a large sum of money to satisfy the needs of the police department. It's good enough for you to expand by five or other two people. <laughs> Great. I expand by five and said I get two. Wonderful. And there's no one in the labor market. Great. Um, a lunatic named Dorothy Townsend snuck out of her room again and broke into the uh, seclusion area we have for violent criminals. Uh, she had hoped to escape with her husband, who was also a patient. This was the report we just received from Carl Carter, a doctor at the psychiatric hospital. The woman uh, has raised a fuss among the other patients. The nurses are being beaten while the um, hospital is wrecked. They, they've locked themselves in and they're driving each other wild. Several nurses have barricaded themselves inside, but we have to get them soon. Please hurry. Okay, we got 18 seconds. I want to see how long it's going to take these guys because I don't want to just send like three officers. No, there are three best, but you know, that would still be. I got a feeling, yeah, they're not going to get back in time. In of course. A witness says he saw a dark sedan abruptly stopped in the middle of the street. A man with a pistol jumped out and began firing through the window of a restaurant. The caller thought it seemed like someone was firing back but wasn't sure. Can I just send SWAT? No, I cannot. Wonderful. Uh, just I thought, Mr. Boyd, we make a great team with my resources and your abilities. We could work wonders together. I'll be glad to provide you with any services I can for a modest fee. It's the least I can do. I, 12 flipping grand for that? Awesome. Like, what can he do for us? Eight of your luxury subordinates can go to luxury house, bro. Okay. So you get a safe firing. Atticus Corp would be happy to make a donation. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's neat. Hmm. Anybody watching, tell me. Is it, is it like worth putting all your money in there? Or is it... Would it be better to, to save? Uh, I'm not going to have any officers to send there. That's not good. Got an abduction. Uh, six year... Uh, six year Alex went to the playground in the park with her father and disappeared in broad daylight. So, like I said, I mean, if anybody knows, like, is it, like I said, is it worth sending officers unharmed? Great. Good job, guys. Is, is it worth sending, um, like, putting all of your money in there to protect it, or what's, uh, what's the, what's the best strategy for that?
Mafia assignment. Uh, Jack, you got into our business uh, when you opened an investigation regarding abduction. It would be better for both of us if the whole thing is settled by 1324. Hopefully 5,000 will cover. No. That's, I don't care if that guy... I'll read that stuff when we get more frames. Uh, I'm not going to give up on a, on a case like that. A teller noticed three hooded men enter the bank carrying sports bags. Frightened teller whispered into the phone, hurry up, I think they're trying to rob us. Why else would they be carrying those bags? McNally, Melly, Wilkinson, uh, guy with the name I can't pronounce. Dennis Chapman reported that his neighbor, Marlon Plouffe, is hiding two young girls against their will in his bomb shelter. The old fool is absolutely out of his gourd. He's convinced that the aliens are coming any day now to destroy us, and he's preparing for the coming disaster. He built a bomb shelter, filled it with food, and somehow got those two girls down there. I hear them crying, and I wanted to help, but Plouffe threatened me with his shotgun, said not to interfere with his affairs. Mr. Chapman also explained that the suspect needed women to repopulate the earth after... Uh, the disaster. Scott, platonic. You're not going alone. There's two of you. Jeez, fine. Send a third. But if that's a fucking false alarm, I'm going to be super pissed. Public indecency. An old woman called in to complain about a transvestite. There's a man in a skirt running around in broad daylight. Has he no shame? He's causing quite a stir at the park, strutting around right in front of children. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll let that one go. Near the bomb shelter, the man with shifty eyes, wringing his hands. Go away, vile aliens. You'll never get me and my wives. I, I, I started him out in normal English, and then gave him a southern accent. Try to calm the man down. Man, and just returned from the gym, and we're gonna stop. God damn it! Four twelve A is progress. Uh, senior writer Ivan Byuk Bykov attacked a young editor who was reading his manuscript. The madman tried to strangle him. Kochi and that guy. Look like the investigations. We'll probably pull a few to pull some detectives off this one. Um, Ackers and Williams. Put Luckett, actually, we'll pull Luckett, put Sharo, Clements, and Davenport on that one. And on the abduction, we'll put Ackers, Williams, and Luckett on that. <coughs> Excuse me, Jesus. Not a transvestite, but a Scotsman out for the walk in the national traditional outfit. Okay. Several witnesses reported that a naked man is riding a motorcycle through the city. He's carrying a pistol and shooting into the air while he laughs hysterically. He's very wild and dangerous. He almost knocked over a girl who was crossing the road. Then he took aim at her and tried to shoot her. Jesus. All right. Like nude motorcycling. Pete's delivery man picked up an order. Uh, in the morning and didn't return for the rest of the day. The manager said their couriers have been attacked and robbed a few times and they are very worried about for the young man. The missing person is Robert Derry, uh, who is well known for his carelessness. He's also nearly been fired for absenteeism. I highly doubt this is a real call, but just in case. I've, I, I, like, I'm, I'm waiting for it to be a smokescreen. Bicob is sitting on top of the editor, strangling him. Take the uh, heaviest book off the table and hit the writer with it. I like that choice. I love how sometimes the funny choices are the correct ones. Good one, Scott. Go for backup. Some girls, yeah, thought so. Public indecency, offender was caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Legal arms sale, yes. SWAT, and that sounds like a send everyone you got kind of thing. in progress. 
uh, passerby says a group of sports cars racing down the road at St. Speeds. They'll kill anyone who gets in their way. These guys won't stop for nothing. There we go. Report on the abduction case. Um, my husband and I are divorced, and he's suing for full custody of Alex. My, I think that's how that is. My lawyer says his chances are zero, and I think he knows it too. Now it looks like he decided not to wait for the courts, just takes uh, what he wants, like alcoholics always do. But how could he do this to his own daughter? He must have used one of his cronies to help grab her. They're always hitting the bottle and ready for trouble. Him and his whole family are a bunch of drunks and a bunch of trouble. Uh, first, I've been sober as a judge uh, for a month now. I go to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings all the time. Second, I only let Alex out of my sight for a second. It was Timothy Gallagher came up. He's great. Uh, we talked for just a second while my daughter was playing by the hill. When I turned to check on her, she was nowhere, completely gone. I think it's Glad Gladys. Yeah. Gladys, who made off with her. She's already trying to set the judge against me. She says I'm unfit to be a father. Yes, I saw Gordon and his daughter in the park. We just talked for a moment. He was going to walk with her down the hill, so I shook his hand and left. Adrian! Teenager in a corn costume. I was, handling it. I was handing out leaflets in the park. I noticed two men drinking whiskey straight from the bottle, sitting on a bench near a roller coaster, and I saw a girl in a blue dress. She was playing near the hill, and th then she bent down and picked up something from the ground. The elderly woman walked up, and she took the girl by the hand and walked away. The woman walked like she was dizzy rich homes valet uh, i didn't see anything suspicious a drunk driver hit a trash can in the parking lot left some light uh light paint behind then just drove off like nothing happened okay so bent down picked you know saw that went to pick it down pick it up a woman came up grabbed her hand and walked away uh, light paint. That doesn't look like a light car, but we'll, we'll wait to see what comes up in the future. Um. Steel bars and electronic combination. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to have to guess the code for some reason, but these doors don't look right to me. So again, we're, we're going to hold off. Oh, wow. Really? All right. It's a trial and error, I guess. Vickis Varga, leader of the Varga fam uh, Mafia family. Officer on the bar is crowded and smoky, and there's a skinny guy lying on the floor. The bartender is wiping the counter with a dirty rag. Everybody finish the drinks and get out. The bartender drops his rag, puts his hand on the bar. The skinny guy on the floor starts to vomit. Keep your hands where I can see him. Uh, Non-automatics. Vicus uh, writes a lifestyle column in the uh, newspaper under pseudonym. Vicus likes to laugh at the clowns and... One of his favorite establishments. I think that's probably more the most likely one. Because at this hour of night, yeah, I think he'd be... Damn it! Yeah, God, these guys can't do shit. Damn it, and I, I missed it just because I, I needed an officer to be, be free to go. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll get him. Maybe not tomorrow because we need Mole to be the uh, be on duty. But we'll get him not uh, not this next day, but the day after. All right, well, guys, that's going to about do it for this one. I want to say, as always, thank you so much for watching. Facebook, Twitter, the website, Minds.com. Links to all that stuff is down in the description below. Like, comment, if you're not already. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for my next time. But until then, my name is AJ Gels. This is the Game Channel. I'm out.